My name is Bogdan Strimbu. I'm an associate professor of uh, forest management and remote sensing at Oregon State University in the forest engineering resources and management department. I divide the foresters in two types. Foresters who look at the top of the canopy and foresters who look below the canopy. Both foresters look to various aspects of the forest. One is uh, now when the more active photosynthetic part, the area that is literally providing life to the tree, which is the crown. And other foresters are looking to the trunks and uh, the lower branching and shrubs and ground, which now provide the supports for the entire crown. I am a biometrician and research uh, optimization by trade, so I, I use LiDAR mainly for forest inventory and gross annual modeling. LiDAR really serve both purposes very well, particularly when they come on a less expensive side. My first encounter with LiDAR was not necessarily very fruitful. I, I wasn't uh, sold on it. But with time, it's just like an acquired taste you start seeing patterns when actually other people doesn't. That can spook some people, but that really triggered my interest later on. Uh, and when I was in Louisiana Tech, I just uh, was mesmerized by the transition from old photogrammetry to the new photogrammetry, photogrammetry through point clouds. And that brought me back to, oh, do you know what? If photogrammetry is doing so many cool stuff, how about going back to active sensors like LiDAR? And this is how I got hooked, richly hooked on, on LiDAR. The forest inventory was, was done traditionally, was just go and cruise the land. You know, measure diameter, heights, at least two people in the field. So a, a huge uh, human effort with very little advancement in terms of land, because the, the land that was covered by two people walking was very little. But with LiDAR, now we can have only one person, which we're gonna cover way more land. That's, uh, that's really an advantage. But the biggest difference in my book is twofold. One, LiDAR will gonna provide us a full census of whatever is in the forest. So we know everything, theoretically, we, we should know every single tree, big or small. That will gonna replace the statistics, the estimates, which come with a confident interval with actually one value, which is really, really powerful. So that's the first advantage. And the second is the fact that LiDAR will gonna provide a snapshot in time. It's literally like a 3D picture of how the forest looks like at a particular moment. And if, if it is of use of today for one entity, it could be used and most likely will be used for many, many other entities in the future. Something that is impossible to, or very unlikely to be, to be done with old tally sheets and cruise logs. And so LiDAR will actually help today needs, but also we're gonna capture today for the future. So I have to say that working with uh, FJ Dynamics products is, is seamless. The sensor works very well. I'm really happy with it. I used to work with Velodyne. We have multiple Velodyne sensors and people knows that, that Velodyne is a very good sensor, but it comes with, with a cost. While FJ Dynamics come with a fraction of the price, and the quality was the same. Like, not, I don't say the same, but anyway, at par. Like, I, I wouldn't, I personally didn't see any difference between the two. That's the whole point. For other application, could be. I'm not arguing with that. But forestry applications, I'm, I'm okay with that. The help that I got from FJ Dynamics, it's clearly extremely good. Like, I will say, probably the best responses in matter of 24 hours, solutions, solutions that are useful, not solutions that we cannot do it, or you have to pay another $10,000, or that kind of answers that are, are actually no, not solutions that come very fast. If everything will be like in FJ Dynamics, everything will be cool. <laughs> Let's put it in this way. Now, a lot of people think the LiDAR is new, actually it's not very new, it's more than 40 years old. The LiDAR definitely in those 40 years matured itself, and I think that is, uh, is on the cusp of moving into the realm of integration information that are supplied directly by the sensor with ancillary data. So I see, I see LiDAR basically having incremental improvements in terms of actually data acquisition, because at the end of the day, you know, what the LiDAR sensor is, is just measuring distances and through time, basically that is, it's a good clock. 
Now, one, one can go down and say, okay, LiDAR is a good clock. But uh, it mature, and therefore, the next stage that I see it is through making it a part of the big family of uh, big data. This is how I see LiDAR uh, going forward, basically. What I see going on is this merge of the two descriptors of the forest, one from below and one from above canopy. And it's uh, now FJ Dynamics is doing a wonderful job on capturing the reality on the ground. But being a forest and being large areas, uh, I think that it will be, and I, I'm positive that this will be the next step in working with terrestrial LiDAR, is making the co-registration of the point clouds seamless. That's basically uh, the most immediate step that I see, uh, not necessarily very hard to implement. Among the many challenges the LiDAR has, this is the low-hanging fruit. Another direction that I think that LiDAR could go into is moving more into this uh, large data, combining multiple da data sources, one of them being LiDAR, merging LiDAR with other remote sensing sources. For example, various coloring schemes that you are coloring the points according to various frequencies that are not uh, part of the, the normal routine. Because I see LiDAR as providing the support for anything else to add, just because it's the most comprehensive descriptor of reality. That's probably the two directions that I see uh, going on, moving forward.